Alright guys, recording Matthew here. I was having some issues with the microphone during the first few parts of this. Um, I did get it fixed, but there is this high whine near the top. Um, it does get better. I found out what the issue was and fixed it, but I cannot re-record those bits. I am sorry. Some of them are pretty long-winded and definitely off script and by this point they would definitely just be losing all marker. Assassin's Creed Brotherhood is the third installment in the Assassin's Creed franchise but it's not the third numbered game. The Assassin's Creed Brotherhood does continue the story from Ezio Alditore starting back in Assassin's Creed 2. This game does pick up anticlimactically after the end of its predecessor. Ezio leaves the Vatican with the Pope AWOL so he didn't kill him. Oh well. And from there we start this new journey through Rome to rebuild the Assassin's Brotherhood. So let's talk specs. As you can tell, these specs are going to be exactly the same as the previous installment. You want to know why? Ubisoft started a cycle I call TikTok, not to be confused with the shit video sharing program. Now, every year we get a new mainline Assassin's Creed game with slight variations in specs, and this time, well, they told us what they meant by 512 megabyte DirectX 9.0C compliant card with shader model 3 or better. We stuck with that same dual core E6700 or Athlon 64-2-6000 but the GPUs were GeForce 8800 GT or ATI Radeon HD 4700. It's great that we can actually use these specs to actually gauge Assassin's Creed 2 and it did only take a year and um, well <laughs> actually 364 days to be precise because this game came out a year like a day before the year anniversary of Assassin's Creed 2. But what's more spectacular is the fact that I ran this on the 7700K and GTX 1080 with 32GB of RAM and how that impacted the performance. Performance wise, it wasn't great, but it was also better than Assassin's Creed 2. Initially it wasn't though, um, it did chug a little near the start, but after I reached Rome it very rarely left 5960fps, which is good. It appears that maybe some extra time in the oven for that Assassin's Creed 2 port could have helped to fix the issues, but it could also be the scope of Assassin's Creed Brotherhood in comparison to the scope of Assassin's Creed 2. This game takes sole place in Rome. Anytime you leave Rome it's a very small instance. As such I would say that the only time it chugged along was in the villa, which it did. And I'm going to give it a little bit of benefit of the doubt in this one, which I forgot to mention. The place has been destroyed. I mean, shit is going to drip a bit, but you know, the game's pretty fucking old. The hardware's pretty fucking new. That bitch just popped in. What can I say? And the initial opening segments in Rome, even though those were kind of themselves, their own thing, it was better once you were in main Rome and you were able to go through as it was, wasn't loading, you know, very... It wasn't loading specialised things. It had an awful lot of things that were just going to be staying there the entire time. Now, apart from that, I can't really complain, it did run smooth and it was locked on the highest preset, so I can't really say. It worked better than the previous game. Now, as stated previously, Brotherhood picks up where the last game left off, in Rome, being lectured by Minerva. And soon after this, Ezio leaves the room to find the Pope missing. And after you leave the area with your Uncle Mario, you have the Apple of Eden in your hand and you make your way back to your uncle's villa. After a little bit of r and &R, Ezio does wake up to his brand new alarm clock, a fucking cannonball through the roof, as Cesare Borgia is knock knock knocking on the villa's front door. And so, in the end, uh, Mario dies, the villa is destroyed, the Borgias have the apple, and Ezio gets a little bit of help getting to Rome. And in Rome, he meets up with Niccolo Machiavelli from the previous game who tells him that the Borgias have a really tight grasp in this city and with absolutely nothing left to lose Ezio makes short work of a Borgia tower and vows that he's going to take back the city, kill Cesare Borgia and reclaim the apple. Now in doing so he also actually rebuilds the Assassin's Creed Brotherhood and whilst doing this ends up swearing in his sister Claudia before being crowned mentor which is the highest rank in the Brotherhood. Bring Claudia. Now? Yes. لا أشياء وقت مطلق بل كل ممكن. The wisdom of our creed is revealed through these words. We work in the dark to serve the light. We are assassins. Claudia, we here dedicate our lives to protecting the freedom of humanity. Mario, our father, the brother, once stood around this fire, fighting off the darkness. Now. I offer the choice to you. Join us.
You and I have not seen eye to eye on many issues. Niccolò! But you are exactly what the Order needed. You have led the charge against the Templars and rebuilt this brotherhood. Now we must put Ezio where he belongs. At the head of the Assassins. Ezio Auditore da Firenze. You will now be known as Il Mentore, the guardian of our order and our secrets. Well, it's a good story. The game takes both strides and falters and how short it is. There's a lot to do in Rome and you do get to meet up with a few old friends. But the biggest filler of the story is the creation and the maintaining of the Brotherhood itself. At any point, once you have built up the Brotherhood, you can just send new recruits all around Europe. Big man, you've been a peasant your whole life. Off to fucking London with you. And you do find yourself just doing an awful lot of this. And it's fun. You want to try and make the missions as much as success as possible. And to do so, you're sitting there micromanaging it and then before you know it the story's done and you don't remember any of it because you're still waiting on your guys coming back from fucking Istanbul. And the gameplay of Assassin's Creed Brotherhood is standard fare for the series at this particular moment in time. Ezio however is a little slower clearly having aged and lost a step. This actually does help show progress as around about this time Ezio is closer to 50 than he is 40. Apart from that we've got all of our usual elements there, the assassinations, the cool extra weaponry, crossbow is also fun, silent gun. Really not too much has changed between 2 and Brotherhood which is good if you were a fan of 2. Some new welcome additions however are the Borgia Towers, uh, if you played any other game recently you, you know roughly what I'm talking about, stronghold in the city that allows you to reduce the guard presence walk freely usual stuff really you know just kill the captain burn the tower down if you've played a far cry game you'll know exactly what i'm talking about here so that many of these buildings are synchronization points so you're checking that off the list if you're a completionist and this was also the first game in the series that allowed for the optional objectives which allow for full sync i feel in this game they do add a little bit of extra challenge and at the same time they are a little more realistic you know, Ezio is an old enough assassin that he should be able to do certain things without being detected. I, however, am not. Now, in the burning down of these buildings, it does also allow you to renovate the city for greater income and reduce prices. It's a bit like upgrading the villa in the previous game, but on a much larger scale. And as previously stated, the Assassin's Brotherhood also got a little mix into this, where you get to recruit people from the streets to join you. In turn, send them all over Europe to complete assassination missions. Now, obviously, this is going to get you a little bit of money, and that's something I was definitely short of in this playthrough. I found myself having like the second armor in the game by completing and does also level the assassins as well which allows you to give them better weapons and better armor which in turn lets them take on harder missions i'm about maybe three hours into a playthrough here on this one and i'm still wearing starter gear that's how strapped for fucking cash it was or be better fighters when you call them out into the field because now you can be fighting 40 guards even though this game does have the new quick kill system where you do a combo and then you can immediately lean over and kill someone else nothing better than calling down a hail of crossbows or having four other guys jump in to help you all in all this was actually welcome additions to gameplay and it was already great gameplay these are additions onto stuff there's really nothing been taken away here which makes it great they even fixed the overcorrection issue I was having in Assassin's Creed 2, so now I wasn't accidentally jumping to my fucking death. Like I said, just a little bit more time in the oven. So let's get down to brass tracks here. Overall, I enjoyed Assassin's Creed Brotherhood a lot more than I did Assassin's Creed 2. Absolute shock horror, I know, but this is the smaller scale game and it actually put a huge part in this. Nothing changed dramatically either, all the changes were small and actually aided the gameplay or did fit within the lore as well, which is quite good. When a fight got too tough, just calling the assassins to help, it was great. The story also did play a good part in this, they did meddle with history, uh, the Pope there was killed with an apple that was poisoned in this game. Though it was theorised that he was accidentally poisoned or died of malaria, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood does paint a different picture. Bear in mind, that is the same Pope that I said we actually killed. But this time he's definitely dead. So how do the numbers stack it? Story 9, gameplay 10, performance 9, and overall 9.3 out of 10. The story doesn't outlive his welcome and it's perfectly paced throughout, though there are a few little time skips here and there that do leave some blank patches, but the dialogue does fill them out well. I do feel that'd be a good place for DLC. Gameplay was kind of everything I wanted. There's enough to keep you going and definitely many things get carried over from Assassin's Creed 2. The new additions do help the game as well, and the slower Ezio does show us aging, the rebuilding of the Brotherhood does show progression, the new Borgia Tower show an escalated threat. Even the additional side objectives, they were fun, and that can go overlooked. Remember at its core, Assassin's Creed is kinda technically a stealth game, and when you think about it, it's even in their mantra. We work in the dark to serve the light. 
but stealth is still optional. Now, like I said, the performance could have been a 10 if it weren't sluggish in the beginning there. It didn't last, but it was still there and I was getting PTSD flashbacks from Assassin's Creed 2. At this point, I want to say I can't attribute that to the computer. It only happened in the opening half hour, two of the smallest locations in the game compared to Rome, which is the largest, and then it never happens again. Sorry, Brotherhood, you were so close. But no dice. Anyway guys, that's it from me. Next time you hear this voice, uh, it wouldn't be an Assassin's Creed game, I'm pretty sure. Here's open. But the next Assassin's Creed game we will cover will be the end of Ezio Auditore's saga. So anyway guys, you didn't need to go home, but you can stay here. I'll catch you in a wee bit. Didn't need to like, didn't need to comment, didn't need to subscribe. But I'll see you all soon.